The name's Heap. Scrap Heap. Welcome to a brand new series of Scrap Heap Challenge, where two teams have to mastermind amazing machines out of this stockpile of scrap. For this brand new series, we've relocated to a brand new heap, containing over 200 tonnes of rusty refuse and sensational scrap. And we've created two huge indoor build areas and provided all the tools and equipment the teams will need to build bigger and balmier machines than ever before. And to celebrate this all new scrap heap, we have set the most ambitious amphibious challenge ever. That's right, this week we are immersing the scrap heapers in the wonderful world of water. They will have to dig out the aquatic apparatus and dive to new depths to build ultra unique Underwater cars. Underwater cars are the stuff of top secret military missions. But to actually create a car that can run along the floor of the ocean is both extremely difficult and highly dangerous. Plunging to depths of over eight feet in a bit of old scrap is plainly insane. And we've picked the perfect two teams to attempt it. Our first set of budding Cousteaus are Army Apache helicopter pilots from the home counties. Leading this team of flyboys is Captain Thomas Hargreave, and by his side are trusty scavengers Toby Jarvis and Oggs Wayman. Ready to reach for the sky, it's the Apache Warriors. And taking them on are three forklift truck drivers from Kent with a homespun passion for drag bike racing. Captain Neil Paxton heads up the team, with Dave Osborne and Mark Richards doing the scavenging. Welcome to the Powerlifters. OK, teams, prepare to immerse yourself in the challenge. You have just ten hours to build your <laughs> underwater cars. Go on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, wait for it. So I think we need to get a diesel power because it's going to run under water. Is that a trick? But... Oh, is... but what about compressed air or something like that? I've tried to um, propel a bath with compressed air and it doesn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> Our teams seem a little out of their depth, so we've laid on two water whiz kids to help them with this week's challenge. From down under comes Guy Seymour, a specialist in sub-aqua vehicle design. He spends his days constantly under pressure. So you had a few ideas then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of. yeah. It's a little bit outside our day-to-day. -day. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking we'd rather be on it than in it. If you're on it, you've got to take all the control gear up. You've also got to do a lot of structural work. I'm quite glad oh. you pointed that out. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I always said you had a stupid idea. <laughs> if you get a standard car, yeah. all you've got to do is seal the doors up and enclose the top and you'll have a nice little air bubble. So we're talking like a diving belt. Yeah, you're talking yeah. a diving bell type thing. The Apache's plan is to create a diving bell from an old car. By sealing all the doors and windows, they hope to create an air pocket large enough to allow the two passengers to breathe underwater. It's a simple solution to the challenge, but they have no way of replenishing the air in their cab, so if they get stuck, they may find that both their air supply and their luck run out. The bloke sitting in there can actually just slide out through the bottom to get in and out. Yeah. Quite easy, I mean, it's going to be underwater, we want that to be easy. The powerlifters have the services of Matthew Cook. He's spent seven years in the prototype department at Land Rover, making engines work under all types of conditions. So if anyone can get a car to run underwater, Cookie can. Oh, chaps. Hey, are. How are you doing? doing? Yeah. What's your ideas, then? Well, we're thinking, like, the air pockets and pull it that we can get our heads in to breathe with. You don't have to be inside the car. You can be on top of the car. Yeah. Ah, right. What we could do is Just maybe... Do you them up through and sit on the roof? Exactly. The powerlifters are taking a more sideways approach, moving all the controls of the car to the roof. This cleverly allows the car to fully submerge without the team getting wet. 
With no issues over air supply and visibility, it may seem the more sensible approach. But those extended control systems will be under great strain. And if they're not careful, the power lifters may be left stranded. The water's going to be around 8 to 10 feet, so we want to give ourselves at least a couple of feet above that for waves splashing and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right, so... You've done know. this before, then, have you? No, not really. <laughs> Right, fellas, you get a list of what you need out there. I mean, chances of finding a 4x4 four extension shaft for the uh, steering column. We're going to need bracing material. That's about it. So, fellas, away you go. Quick as you can. OK? Yeah. yeah let's, let's go. go. So, with their scrap list sorted for this mammoth maritime challenge, our team set sail on their scavenge. Will the Apache Warriors soar above the competition, or will the powerlifters send them to Davy Jones' locker? Oh, darn. I say, mister, could you give me a hand? My car has just conked out. Oh, pop the bonnet and I'll have a look. <sighs> oh, I see your problem, love. <laughs> you flooded your engine. Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where our teams are racing out on the heap, scavenging for the best seafaring scrap to build their underwater cars. Okay. Very keen. Very keen. Keen teams. Keen teams. Definitely. The powerlifters are trawling through the trash, trying to net enough bits to build their rooftop-driven submersible. Their ingenious interpretation of the rules should allow them to drive their vehicle from on top of the roof if they can get their hands on the parts. Anything over there? No, nothing over there, Doug. Should we go over there? Or that container over there? Um, so. The Apache warriors are taking a more leisurely approach to their scavenge, preferring to enjoy the sights of the heat. <laughs> Half an A35. Yeah. <laughs> but they've got a lot of scavenging to find all the bits of their diving bell design that will enable their team to breathe underwater. While strolling around the heap, Oggs has stumbled across a Kia pickup that has seen better days. Thomas Oggs. Yeah, Oggs. Right, I've just stopped with um, one uh, vehicle. It's a, a two-seater uh, pickup truck. OK. Uh, that sounds pretty good. If it's diesel, it's worth fiddling with to try and get it going. OK, this one's a diesel for sure. Um, Hello, what have you got, Tobes? Mm. We've got a bloody great lorry here with a tank on the back of it. Tobes? Surely that truck is a little on the large side for their diving bell. <laughs> That's a monster. It is, but I think it looks in better nick than the uh, the other one. I agree. Have you had a look inside the cab? No, let's have a, let's have a look in the cab. Shimmy up there and have a... Maybe Tobes and Oggs have heavyweight ambitions. Uh, problem. Well, it's pretty damn big. It's sort of seven tonne size. I think this looks quite promising, actually. Yeah, I agree. Big might be best for the Apache Warriors, but their expert yeah. guy isn't so sure. A seven-ton lorry? Yeah, this has got a snorkel and things already. How big's the cab? What's the front wheels? Has it got drive to the front wheels? Well, it's going to be two-wheel drive, unfortunately, but we can put monster tyres on the back of this thing, because it's a... On the back? Yeah. Where's the cab? On the front. That's where we need the monster tyres. You're talking two, three tonnes of weight, plus the weight of the lorry, you're talking four or five tonnes on skinny little wheels at well, the front. Look, if the, they don't drive, we ain't going nowhere. The wheels... The, the Guy thinks the seven-tonne truck option seven will sink tonne their tonne chances. Tonne. What's this here? But it may be too late, as the powerlifters on the hunt for a high-top truck are now sniffing around the Kia pickup too. The other issue with this thing is it is tall. Is, is it? the Kia tall? There's keys in both of them. No, no, is the, the Kia, Kia tall. Oh. The Kia <laughs> tall. <laughs> <laughs> this is dodgy yeah. accent. <laughs> oi, oi. <laughs> no one's going to be laughing if the Kia's been nabbed by Mark and Dave. Tobes, it's Oggs. Send over. The guys are saying that the Kia, the blue Kia that we went to first of all, is, is the ideal vehicle. Roger that. Oggs is off, but is it all too late for the Apache Warriors? The engine out of that ain't be good enough anyway, is it? Nah. So that's going to be too small. Luckily for him, Mark and Dave aren't interested, as they've spied something more promising on the other side of the heap. Is that thing? There's a... Uh... What's that? What's that? What's this one here? We've got a Zuzu troop of diesel. Diesel, but it's got no diesel engine. Well, that's cool. Can you ever drag that back here first and then maybe go out and find a diesel engine? Yeah, cool. We'll do that. Let me get this straight. The powerlifters weren't interested in the pickup with the diesel engine, but have now gone for a 4x4 with no engine. No. Engine. Could be diesel. Yeah, could be. 
But Dave has a plan. Right, ready, Mark? You got fingers out of the way? Yeah, go on, get it going, mate. <laughs> Morning, gentlemen. Oh, you've, you've found something that you like? Yeah. Turbo diesel engine, um, which is really what we want for, um, for the underwater challenge. Right. But will um, you use this car, though? Are you going to keep it in this um, car? Well, we've seen a 4 before up there. We might, right. might use that and graft the engine to that. It's easy. Yeah. Just yeah. do a bit of grafting. Yeah, of course yeah. it is. Yeah, it's not a problem at all, is it? <laughs> and do you want four-wheel drive because of Because of the sandy traction? bottom and of the water, right. you know? It's going to be silt and sludge or whatever. The power lifters can't find a suitable working vehicle, so instead have decided to marry together their diesel engine and their 4x4. They're going to turn the engine on its side and graft its two half shafts to the 4x4's front and rear drive shafts. This will give them four-wheel drive, which may prove useful when negotiating the seabed. But if they misalign those shafts, then their hopes of victory may turn into sunken dreams. Grafting. Graft one engine. That car's got an engine with wheels. They're going to take it out, graft it onto a, a, a wreck. It's over there. It's simple. It's very simple. Keep it simple is often... <sighs> Keeping things simple is just what these three forklifting fixers do best. Simple and downright dangerous. As when they're not hard at work, they head down to the strip for a bit of drag bike action. 12 week games to build in 30 seconds to blow up. Yeah. <laughs> Blazing the trail for these biker boys is Captain Neil. Neil likes to think he's in control of us. We do take on board what he says. He's got plenty of knowledge in any boy. Well, I think so. Yeah. The joker in this pack of powerlifters is Dave. How will I sum up Dave? Every day he rings me up and says he's too ill to come to work, and yet he's at work. Yeah, he's just a wind-up merchant, but he's a good engineer. And the last of this trio of tinkering nuts is gentle giant Mark. Really good mate, known him for a long time, about eight years, very skilled chap. This is one team who is determined to triumph at all costs. We're going to win, and if we don't win, we're going to nobble the other team. Out on the heap, Ox and Tobes have scored the Kia for the Apache Warriors, but now they've got to get it off this mountain of metal. Ah, oh, Apaches! How are you doing? Hey, good morning. You well? Well, we think we found a submarine lorry. <laughs> I was going to say, now, underwater cars, clearly a strong point, seeing as you used to flying helicopters. Yeah, not our usual medium. No. Were you excited when you heard the challenge or just, frankly, petrified? Petrified, for sure. Yeah. Uh, now, you found a, a very fetching a sort of duck egg blue van. Yeah. Doesn't look dreadfully watertight. We're only interested in water sealing the front end. Right, So okay. actually having a small cab is an advantage. Good stuff. Do you need a hand pushing it out of there, or do you need to be all right? Yeah, if you could get yourself down in the ditch end there. You're on. <laughs> Go on. All right. It's great watching other people work, especially when they're blokes. It's all too much for Ogs and Tobes, and it's time to call in the cavalry. Uh, we need some more manpower. Can you two guys come out here and help us lift this thing? What, you mean, mean my strength isn't good enough? Nicely done. It appeals to the vandal in me. Is it in Go case? on, Ogs. Give it some welly. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Best of luck. Good luck, Apaches. I'll see you later on. Thank you very much. Nice little garden in the back. They keep small sheep up, We're actually going to have some petunias. We thought we'd go with <laughs> yeah. a water feature as well. Uh. <laughs> like it. Up there for thinking. <laughs> up there for thinking indeed, as these three army aces fly one of the world's most high-tech helicopters. And when they're not flying high, they too tinker with two wheels. Playing around with motorbikes is our thing. He likes to buy ones that work, so you can just press the button and they go. I like to yeah. buy crashed, bent, knackered ones. And I like to buy very, very old ones. Captain Tom likes to consider himself the thinker of the team, but the others have different ideas. We chose Tom to be our uh, captain because no, no, he's no. the bossiest. <laughs> well, when you're ready, lads, come on, get a move on. Tobes is a true gent, and when he's not soaked in engine oil, he's dripping with charm. Three words for Toby. Prudent, obstinate, um, <laughs> but funny. Oggs rounds out the team with brawn and banter. Oggs, he's mad, big and blonde. Our battalion of bodgers stand to attention and are ready for a scrappy skirmish. We are the, the Apache, Apache Warriors. Warriors. 
There's no hanging around with the powerlifters as they frantically free their 4x4. Come back, come back, come back, come back. Go on, go on, go on. Full lock left. Right. <laughs> you going, Annie? They're, they're making about, they're in the way. We have to try and get it this way, I think. Just drive around there, they're going to have to move out of the way, won't they? Well, let's get it this way, then. What, we're going to push it back in there? I'll try and pull the satchel front round. Well, I wouldn't. No? All right, on you go. Give it a lull, the hogs. Floor it. Floor it. Right away, mate. The Apache's carefree attitude has given Dave a dose of scrap rage. Oh, look out. Look out. He's doing about 300 mile an hour. Well done, chaps. I guess it's started. We need it running, so... Yeah. Dave and Mark go back on the heap to reclaim their abandoned engine. Fingers. While Cookie and Neil finally have something to get their gas axe into. Oh, yeah, it's coming. Oh, yeah, that, there it goes. I like that. I like a bit of flame in the morning. <laughs> Warm you up, wouldn't it? <laughs> Right. So it's a bit of a, a steep challenge to throw at you. I mean, forklift drivers, I, I haven't seen an underwater forklift truck. There could be one. Well, they do try Specialist and, Occasionally ones. they drive them in the docks. Do but, they? Yeah. yeah, I suppose that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to, uh, tend to sink rather rapidly. But, I mean, the thing, I think the thing that a lot of people would be confused about is if you stick an engine underwater, you think, you know, generally the yeah. lay person would think well, that the, will stop it working. Though. We're going to use a diesel, um, yeah. just take the air intake as high as we can. Right. Um, and the exhaust as high as we can. So a petrol engine underwater is not good, is it? We've got the ignition problems. Both teams will be looking to use a diesel over a petrol engine, as it will work much better underwater. A petrol engine takes a mixture of fuel and air, compresses it and ignites the mixture with an electrical spark. But the spark plugs won't work if they're wet. A diesel engine also mixes fuel with compressed air, but it's the heat of this compressed air that ignites the diesel fuel, so no spark plugs are required. Instead, a diesel engine uses a glow plug, which heats the air to a temperature that will ignite the fuel. Once started, the glow plug is no longer required, so water isn't an issue. By using a diesel, both our teams should be able to power through the wet stuff. What happens with things like tyres and air and being underwater? With a, with a tyre this sort of size, you'll probably get about 25 to 30 kilograms of lift. So, right. obviously, the vehicle weight will we'll keep that down, right. plus my weight. <laughs> so, and also, if you flood, so if the actual vehicle itself is full of water, you've not got yeah. that buoyancy yeah. problem. Yeah, we're going to let the air out. Taking all the, water, the right. doors off to get the water exactly out. the opposite of a lot of the challenges we've done with things on water is that yeah. you want them to float, but in this Absolutely. case, you really want it to stay... And go straight yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. It's all hands on deck for the Apaches as they give their Kia a spring clean. I mean, the thing, I Captain Tom knows they're running well behind, so sends his scavengers straight back out for more metal. All right, first of all, how are you going to get in and out? We're going to go through this big hole we cut in the bottom. Right. So we have to pay a lot of attention to make sure that we can squeeze in and out of that nicely. <laughs> it's going to be like an inverse Dukes of Hazard. Exactly. Isn't it? Almost. Yes. Up the side. Yeah. yeah, you got it. How long do you think you're going to have in that air bubble before the oxygen runs out? We've probably got maybe five, five minutes. Um, but realistically, we'll be quite safe up to probably 25 minutes, half an hour in that space. There's a big gap between five minutes and 25 minutes. It's definitely safe to five, possibly up to 25. <laughs> <laughs> Even after their leisurely start, the Apaches seem to be flagging already. Giving up on that. They're going to have to get a move on. Time is trickling away. Time check. Uh, teams, quick time check. You have seven hours construction time remaining. Seven hours remaining, teams. Thank you. Are you coming back to help us today, or are you just sort of staying out there all day? Neil is pushing his team harder and harder. And with a bit of juice, even that old diesel is coaxed into life. Yeah. With this old banger fired up, things are looking good for the powerlifters, as they now have most of the bits they need to make their seafaring submersible. Having stripped away the surplus scrap, the Apaches have struck a hitch. It's number one priority to get that engine going. Guy is right. Without the engine firing on all cylinders, they are going nowhere. No, I thought maybe that would no. do as a box, Nothing. but no. too much work to, to get that out fuel system, aren't we? from back to front. This is not good news for the Apache Warriors. Can't 
think of anything else it could be. This week's judge is a scrap heap veteran. Stephanie Merry is a marine engineering consultant with a specialist expertise in submersible vehicles. Perfect for the job. Now, Stephanie, it's actually very good to have you back again. I mean, it's been a few years since you were a judge on Scrap Heap. Yeah. And that was, it, well, that was when we had the underwater sort of the... the diver the, delivery vehicles. Diver delivery vehicles, because yeah. I was called it torpedoes that men hung onto. That's right, yes. <laughs> but, but diver delivery vehicles better. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, the, the challenge we've got today is rather different, mm. which, I mean, it must be fraught with more difficulties than I dare think about. Well, I, I believe so, yeah. <laughs> In fact, it's sort of reverse engineering a fish out of water. So you've got to make sure that air still gets to the bits that need air, yeah. that water doesn't get to the bits that can't take water. Yeah. The Apaches are going to have a, a diving bell of some sort. I mean, a, 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 a watertight container with air in it, with the people in it. Yes, and, and I heard something about welding the doors to, and I thought, oh, I wouldn't oh, want really to be inside a car <laughs> underwater <laughs> with the doors, the doors welded up. Yeah. So, I mean, we've got two oh, different approaches. Well, the one I must admit appeals to me more is the, the power lifters uh, staying above the water, <laughs> which I think is well, a very sensible <laughs> solution to the yeah. problem. And I think that's the big difference between the two teams. The power lifters are coming very much from the sort of auto automotive engineering side. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Apache Warriors, their leader is an underwater vehicle man, right. so he's, it, he's yeah. turning his car into an underwater vehicle. <laughs> Nobody's been stupid enough to make a car that drives along the bottom of the sea, or has that ever well, been I, done? Well, I believe James Bond did, didn't he? Well, he did. Yeah. They, they probably spent eight months and £17,000 doing it. Or a lot more than that, I would think, yes. Right. <laughs> Lord. With six hours to go, the power lifters are ratcheting up their lead, working on their engine. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, it fired up. It was a bit smoky while the Apaches are floundering with theirs. Nothing? No. Join us after the break to see if the Apache Warriors can pick up the place, or will the power lifters surf to victory? You've never seen anything like this in your life before. People are fleeing in terror at the sight of the monsters from the deep. Ah! Oh, what's the big deal? I was just parking the car. This week, our two teams are constructing underwater cars. The power lifters are extending the controls so they can sit on the roof of their vehicle. Steve, help! While the Apaches are going under in a diving bell made from an old pickup. Don't need that. The power lifters' pace is relentless as they work to free their engine. But it's a different story with the Apaches as their engine's glow plugs just aren't up to the job. Until... I'll tell you what else there's an option for, is if they've got a hot air dryer. You know the old paint stripping guns? There is one, yeah. Blow that down your air filter. Yeah. A moment of Og's ingenuity. OK, go. <laughs> By using the heat gun to blow hot air into the engine, the Apaches have heated the glow plugs, breathing life into the old banger. So, Orcs, did you get this idea of the hairdryer while you were doing your hair this morning? <laughs> <laughs> that is great news. With what we've got left to do, we've got to get extra... Wheel Their engine wheel troubles have set them back, yeah. but now it's time to regroup get and get on with it. Uh, whiteboard. That's a good idea, mate. And that was mine. That was good idea. That idea. That's a great idea. Clear, clear, clear! OK. Yeah. She's going. Yahoo! <laughs> The powerlifters are marching on. Dave is out on the front line and Captain Neil is taking no prisoners. On a UJ for a steering joint, something like a Ford Fiesta one that goes right on the rack, it's a little short one. Yeah, OK. Just take the whole lot out and just spin it. To graft their engine to the 4x4, Cookie and Neil need to cut a big hole in the bottom of the chassis. Having hacked their hole, it's time to get their Isuzu back on four wheels and ship shape. Right, let's get the pace going. Pace doesn't seem to be a problem. Here's Dave back from the heat with a universal joint for the steering. It's all going there. I don't think I've ever seen a scrap heap team get going so fast. What are you feeding them on? Well, <laughs> it's adrenaline, really. Is it? Yeah, because we now we've got a good, a good, good hard build. A lot um, to do. A lot to do. So it's uh, the more time we stand around. 
<laughs> doing nothing is uh, making it harder for us, you know, so... OK. I can see you're absolutely gagging to get oh, back oh, in yeah, there. Yeah. Go on, in you go, <laughs> Dave. You Speak to you later. That told you, Lisa. Can you d just do me a sketch of what, how you want this bracing to look? Yep. Whiteboard, let's go. The army boys are facing the realities of building a dive bell. Trapped air, whilst keeping them alive, may also be their downfall. If they don't fully brace their windows, they could really be feeling the pressure. If we look at the front of the windscreen, it's like yeah. that. Um, what we want is some bracing to come up here, and it's either on the front of the vehicle or off to the side here. Um, something coming up there, <coughs> something coming up there, a bar across the top, and then what we want is bracing running down there like that. We've got to do the side windows and the rear one, yeah? Yeah. This is a monstrous amount of welding. This is a huge amount of welding. We've got to build this cage. Welcome to this week's Scrap Lab. To illustrate why the Apaches need to brace their windscreen, we've made two mini diving bells out of plastic boxes and added a window to each. Robert has decided to add a large window. While Lisa is happy with a small porthole. Once the windows are sealed, all we need now is a diving tank. When we put the diving bells in the water, Rob's window immediately pops out. And that's exactly what will happen to the Apache's windscreen if they aren't careful. This is because the air is trapped inside the box. It is compressed by the water pushing up on it. Rob's larger window has a bigger surface area and so experiences greater pressure on it. In fact, too strong for the bond to hold the window in place. Lisa's window is much smaller and so the glue can cope with the reduced pressure and as her diving bell descends, the water pressure then increases to more than the air pressure inside the box. So the window will never pop out. So the Apaches must brace their large windscreen to stop the window popping out and the water flooding in. I'm going to start cutting right. this back out. Right, I'm going to have these doors off. So with all the plans agreed, the Apaches can finally start building their bell. Tobes has found some sheet metal that he thinks is perfect to bolster the sides. Mate, you've done a good job of that. Seal. But have we got enough room to slide in and out? Um, I... Well, we can always take a curve out of the... What is that? It's a carb roof. Is it? Uh-oh. That piece of that sheet steel, steel is, is far too flimsy for the pressures involved. Uh, teams, you have five hours remaining. Five hours, that's all. Thank you. Five hours. Five hours. <laughs> it's back out on the heap for Tobes and Ogs. <laughs> Dave is back on the scavenge for engine parts, and Neil is getting impatient. How's nice things, Dave? Pretty poor. That steering joint I was trying to find, it's just too crammed in there. I can't get a good swing on the spanners to actually give the nut a ride off it, you know, so it's a, it's a no go on that. You're talking about the half shaft, don't you? Not the steering joint. No, you said you've got half shaft, you said. No, I said I've got a steering joint, I haven't got the half shaft. <laughs> Make your mind up. For the power lifters, it's a case of more haste, less speed. But it doesn't put a spanner in the works for long, as Neil is using typical scrap heap precision to find the best angle for the steering column. Yeah, do a little bit off to the right. Be straight up a little bit. You want to look good, don't we? <laughs> I found some much better sheet. Tobes and Ogs thicker sheet metal should be strong enough Guys. to keep the sea at bay. Ton, tons of sheet. Tom is given the job of cutting out the bracing, which is causing a little concern to the firemen. The powerlifters are getting their sky-high seats onto the roof. Nothing the power steering's working. And putting the finishing touches to the engine. What oh, state of this? Oh. Ready to have a rend. That's a good boy. What's that just dropped in? Oh, I don't know, well, the powerlifters are actually doing quite well, aren't they? They've sort of moved ahead rather suddenly. The, their progress in the last half hour has been phenomenal, mm. yeah. They've, they've got the extension to the steering wheel finished. 
and, and they're busy putting the supports up on the roof. Then the Apache Warriors, I mean, for all the, all the worries that the powerlifters have, the Apache Warriors have another 100,000, I think. Well, they do. They've given themselves this extra challenge of keeping a couple of people alive underwater. Yeah. And, and it doesn't have to go very far up. Oh, I just, <laughs> I just don't want to be... I'm okay. very anxious for their pocket. I wish they had a bigger pocket. Yes, so do I. But it, I, mean, I just can't imagine how it's going to work. But do you think it will work if they've got enough weight on it to keep it underwater? They've got to keep it down, yes, because, it needs to be very because heavy, they've got it? to compensate for the buoyancy of that big air yeah. pocket. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got a lot of pressure problems structurally oh, okay. on the car. Yeah. Have you got a favourite in terms of survivability and, <laughs> and sustainability around the course? Yes, I, I think my money at the moment would be on the power lifters because they've got as I said, this one less problem to solve. They haven't got to keep the people alive yeah. underwater. Any good? It's a lot more solid. Yeah. At last, the Apaches are happy with their bracing panels and their scrappy sub is finally taking shape. Tom's welding is crucial to ensure a watertight cab. We haven't got stroppy with each other yet. Yes, we have. Oh. Boy! <laughs> Don't you start! <laughs> There's no need to flap. We've, We've all, all had, had a long, long day. day. Guy is not taking any chances with the size of his exhaust. I thought it was eight foot we needed, not 18. No, we want a little bit of clearance above the okay, waves. Mate. You know? All right, mate. Just, yeah, just whatever. in case it's a little choppy. You're yeah, the mate. expert, mate. Yeah. <laughs> a quick clean and the windscreen is ready for the bracing and the Apaches are ready for another tea break. I'm getting the flag a bit, actually. Yeah, let's get a quick cup of tea. Yeah. Rob, earlier on I said to you that the Apaches, being a team from the services, mm. worked brilliantly as a team, whereas the powerlifters, you know, driving forklift trucks, their teamwork might not be quite so good. I was entirely wrong <laughs> on both counts. How things can change. How <laughs> things can change. They've basically got this cab that's going to be airtight, which is all holes. And they've got, they've got some bits of metal they're welding onto it, but it is quite nerve-wracking. I mean, because what they're doing is such a brave, insanely brave idea. Because it's not been done on, on the heat before, never. is Never. We've never done anything like this. We've never forced people <laughs> to drive into the sea. Against their will. Against their will. With a whip. <laughs> Get in there. Go on. It'll be fine. <laughs> While the Apaches relax with sandwiches and cake, the powerlifters are fitting their engine, and everything is running like a well-oiled machine. What's your feel? There we are. We're in. You just cut your nail off. Hang on, let me move that gator back. It's just come off, hasn't it? Where's all the needle rollers? They're not in the bottom. Four. Looks like there is a storm brewing with their drive shaft. So, so, so what's happening? This is. Oh, it looks lovely. This is nice and oily. Slight disaster. Is it? Turn the CV apart and it's broken up inside. Uh, and the race has come off and all the little needles have fell out. <sighs> Although I'm clearly completely okay with what this large oily lump is. It is a... It's the CV joint, uh, constant velocity joint. It's from the front drive shaft. Right. Front wheel drive cars, nearly all of them. Um, basically, it allows the driver of the engine to drive at any angle. Oh, so it's it up and the, down and Up and down and steers, right. Yeah. So it's, it's like a universal joint, but more. Similar, yeah, but right. uh, just a little bit more involved. They work right. at stronger angles. So. And the fact that all these little needle bearings and everything have come out of it means it's not Means working. it's not well. Right. Yeah, <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy. I mean, how sort of fixable is it up to the level you need it? Um, well, if we haven't got enough needles, then I'm just going to cut a bit of pipe that goes inside here and around that. But the amount of time it's going to travel, yeah. we might get away with it. Right. Because what can happen with them? I mean, can they shatter or if break or seize up? If it breaks up completely, up? then this will break up and then the whole thing will just... So you just lose drive. Different you angles, don't, right. And then it'll be no yeah. drive at all. Right. So it is kind of vaguely important. Reasonably important. Yeah. 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 Right, and presumably this is something, an extra complication you don't need with an already... We really 30. didn't need this, because no. we're, we're, we're a little bit behind at the moment. Well, I'm you're not... looking like you've done, you've got quite a lot done. I mean, you've got the, the steering's in, the seats are in. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately we haven't got the engine driving anything yet. Ah, so you um, could sit up there, but you wouldn't be going very... Well, we could oh. pedal, but... Yeah. <laughs> paddle. Yeah, paddle. So yeah, paddle. Yeah, we paddle. <laughs> we'll look at putting some weight on the front, I think. We've got a bit of metal weighs about 200 kilos. Yeah, OK. The Apaches need to get some heavy ballast, or their pickup will be floating to the surface. Oh, you got it partially out. How'd you yeah. do that? I got angry. After manhandling metal on the heap, Oggs and Tobes return to the build area laden with goodies. Still smiling. That's yeah, well, good. I've lifted lots of things. That's always good. I've hammered lots of things. Right. That's always good. And we've made an engine run. You made the engine run. Yeah, which is also good. So that I'm is happy. also good. 
With only two hours to go, the powerlifter's only option is to do it a scrap heap way by bodging the CB joint. And Cookie has to give Neil the bad news. I really, I'd be getting that back on and um, going for it, really would be. It's a gamble, but time is running out. The boys have gone up yet another gear and are extending everything from the exhaust, the throttle, even the clutch, up to the roof and beyond. It's in. The engine's it's joined on. Yeah, it's all bolted in now. So you ready to have yeah, a Yeah, it's rear rock and roll. Mark's just doing the wiring. And it, um, and it goes the right way and spins yep, the right way and yep. turns the wheels the right way? Yep. Well, fingers crossed. We could be going reverse very quickly. But... <laughs> so where's the clutch? This then? is our clutch lever, which is right. possibly the longest in the world. It goes, as you can see, right the way up to the top there. I'll cut that off there. The right amount of ballast is crucial, and Guy needs to do some last-minute number crunching. Or he could just guess. Team, yeah. how much do we reckon our vehicle weighs without the extra weight on it? Without? A ton and, and a half? A ton and a half. Uh, teams, you have one hour remaining. One hour remaining, teams. One hour. One hour, one hour. One hour. Hogs. One, one hour. hour. Some poor sandpaper or something. Oh. Oh. On your toes. Crash. Normally, at this time of the day, I want the teams to finish. You know, they've been struggling all day. Today, though, I've been sort of sneaking, looking, and, go, and I'm, when they look like they're doing really well, I've been disappointed, because that means that they have to do the test. I went into the Apaches, and they were remarkably chipper. Well, I mean, that machine does look really good It now. looks fantastic. Yeah. Og was very, very funny. Can I slice the seatbelt? <laughs> you need that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same, it's the same with the powerlifters. They hope that the, the engine will be able to breathe really? down that enormously long breather pipe. They hope that the exhaust will come out of the ludicrously long exhaust pipe. No one knows. No one knows. No one knows. That's it. Oh, no, 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 no. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, probably. All right. You knock it off. Ah, chuffed to mine there. It runs. It's right to the wire, as in the dying seconds, the Apache warriors are welding the weight to their underwater vehicle. Yeah. OK, teams, your time is up! Cool, well done. Yes, teams, step away from your vehicles and prepare yourselves for the challenge of your life. As tomorrow, you will face each other in the scrap heap pool of peril. Yeah. Well done, team. Well done, team. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. Good Good guys. Guys. Right. Not chaps. Excellent work. Excellent Just work. It's been a long day with a brilliant build from our two teams. But how will they fare on this, the most dangerous of challenges? Will the Apache Warriors underwater wagon claim a scalp? Or will the powerlifters flooded 4x4 four four sail to victory? 75 years ago, the beachfront at Margate was a haven of peace and relaxation for the East Enders of London. But today, Scrap Heap is back to rip up the ocean bed. Come on! It's tinkering time, and both teams are making some last minute adjustments to their aquatic autos in a bid to conquer the deep. The teams will have just one chance to complete the course in the quickest time possible. They'll drive down the beach and power through the water. By the time they round the buoy, the depth will be eight feet and their vehicle submerged. Then it's a quick splash and a dash back through the water, up the beach and past the finish line. Well, here we are, Steph, at the delightful uh, Margate Lido. It's, isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful, isn't it? What a view. Lovely sight. Now, and the horizon. The horizon is over there somewhere, apparently. Yes. <laughs> I've had it pointed out to me. I really don't envy them at all. I don't think... I think they're... They don't cool. envy themselves. No, I think they don't, do they? <laughs> For the power lifters, you know, at least they can... Well, we hope they can see where they're going. So they're just heading straight out to the boy, turn around, come back. You yes. know, that's the theory. Yep. The only reason I can think of why they won't get around is if something breaks. Yeah. I mean, they've got these yeah. great big long control systems that might snap yes. off. Yeah. Or the engine actually isn't on proper mount. Even on Scrappy, but I don't think a vehicle's been steered from quite that distance. <laughs> is it not? It's a very, very long extension to the steering. It is a long extension. It, it may be a very short 
a, a short uh. entrance. First up, it's the power lifters. Cookie is sitting pretty in the driving seat, and Mark is crunching the nine foot clutch while Neil and Dave are offering support from the shore. Power lifters, prepare to be the Margate Marvel. Go on the sound of the horn. Yep, go for it, mate. Margate has never seen anything like this before. It's very nicely controlled descent. Oh, wow, Ooh, they're going for speed, they're going for speed. She sounds nice, doesn't she? Down a bit. He's all right, mate, he's all right, he's all right. Cookie has really got that engine roaring as they turn towards the sea. And they submerge so now. This is the first time it's been in water, isn't it? This so is the test. Let's see what happens now. It's like changing the nice, nice bow wave on it. Lovely bow wave. Oh, that chassis is flooding fast with water. He's on full throw now. No, mate, nowhere near. We're about halfway, maybe a third. The water up. No, mate, we'll get round there. Oh. Japanese car seat. Good luck. Yeah. They're approaching the halfway mark and they are flying along. Roof's under now, so they are complete. The they vehicle's are, completely they submerged. Are submerged. Going well, guys. Just nice and steady. They've made mincemeat of it. The water doesn't seem to have affected their engine at all, and that was the thing they were worried about. She's going squeezing that way. Hold on, she's starting to die a little bit. Right. She's starting to die quite a little bit. She. The finish is not far off, but their engine is struggling. This is going to be a good time. Yeah. Back the revs off a little bit as you come out of the water. Down a bit, down a bit, down a bit. Something's happening. Whoa, whoa, oh, don't go mad, don't go mad! <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> well done. You can see their feet are slightly wet, but that's all. Brilliant. Well done, power lifters. I think they're driving back to London. Uh -huh. Hey! Yeah. I'll just see they're on! Oh! Yes! <laughs> no problems at all. Well, it's just not hard enough, this challenge, obviously. No, I don't think... I Drive think, your car I around underwater. Just, they, they should have had to go around twice, I yeah. think. Yeah. Too easy. <laughs> what an amazing achievement. The powerlifters really churned up that water and set a sea-scorching time of 2 minutes and 15 seconds. The Apaches will need to be at their scrappy best to win this Battle of the Bodgers. Apache Warriors, the time has come. How did you two get out of going in there? That's all I don't know. Well, it's about leadership, and you've got to get the right people for the right job, and command is best from behind. Mate, you wussed out. <laughs> <laughs> you wussed out, didn't you? Yeah. But yeah. Ox came out with a perfected ear no, drum excuse. I was running He was having a cup of tea away. at the time. I was having a cup of yeah. tea, yeah. yes. Are you nervous at all? Are you quite happy about it? I'm this? absolutely fine about it. I'm pretty, re <laughs> pretty relaxed about it. Yes. Yeah. Funny that. Yeah. The Apache Warriors live for danger. Good. Is that what it says in your T-shirts? He does sometimes T-shirt, yeah. He does. <laughs> So, Steph, the, the Apache Warriors grew up next. I mean, that's uh, uh, an unknown, really, isn't it? As soon as they're underwater... They won't be able to see very much at all. They certainly guesswork. won't see the boy. So, the, yeah, the other two team members are down here on the beach. But they're going to be on the same level yeah. as, as the water, almost. So it's going to be very difficult. For them to, for them to guess where it is. So, mm. in fact, it is, it is genuinely a case of the blind leave it, leave it, leading the utterly, utterly, utterly sightless. I believe so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Due to the enormous dangers involved, safety is our first concern. So two divers will be in position on the back of the Apache's vehicle. Guy and Tobes must wear breathing regulators, but the diving bell cannot leak or it'll be game over. Apache warriors, let's see a little bit of Margate magic. Go on the sound of the horn! <laughs> There's no stopping them now. Nice, Magic. steady movement. Magic. Yeah, they didn't dig in the sand at the bottom. No, no, they're going very smoothly. I wonder if that's slow and steady progress or whether it's the boys in the cab putting off the moment they actually have to go in the water. Ready, break in. 
The safety regulators are in, but the air pocket must hold out for their challenge to succeed. Keep it going. Well done, boys. Looking good. They have got such they're, nerve. They're going to be sitting in water now, aren't they? Doing good. And a slightly nervous voice. <laughs> <laughs> The water levels are now dangerously high in the cab. So left turn now, left turn now. They're doing really well. That is amazing. They're making the turn, they're making the turn. Fantastic. Straight. And right turn, right, right, right. <laughs> but something's not right. right. They are going right. way off course. Right! <laughs> right! Just take the boy with you guys. No, but there wasn't any rules about not taking no, the boy. They didn't say they couldn't do that. But now they're heading for the rocky but stuff. Do you think they've lost the steering? Okay, we got a visual. Beautiful. <laughs> Come on! Come on, boys. <laughs> Go the Kia. What a success! The pocket of air held out and they are now storming to the finish. OK, crank it up. That is fantastic. That is not what I expected. I've all. not grown up I really scrapping to expect to see something that. like that. Do you think you're a bit weird? He's kissing his blue beast. <laughs> the Apaches did brilliantly, steering their jalopy to the finish even after the aquatic altercation with that big boy. And they did all this in a titanic time of 4 minutes and 20 seconds. Well, teams, we have loved this week's challenge. In spite of the rain, we set you a very, very difficult build. Now, also uniquely this week, a team of Build Machine, which for the first time in my scrap memory, I've said, I would not do that. I would not get in that machine. And so for that reason, that reason alone, congratulations to the Apache Warriors. Well done. Yay. Yay. Oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> very soggy hands, sorry. <laughs> But on the other hand, the powerlifters managed to find a four-wheel drive vehicle with no engine, and they then grafted in, as you described, an engine that was never going to work. And without question today, win the challenge with over two minutes lead, the powerlifters! Hey! There you go, yes. Well done. Go on, Ed, get him! Hey! Hey! <laughs> 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 well done, there, guys. Well done. We'll see you again. And if you enjoyed those wet and wild shenanigans, join us on Scrap Heap Challenge for more next week. Next time on Scrap Heap Challenge, it's... Kung Fu fighting, karate chopping cars! Our teams must become mechanical martial artists and construct a giant chopping machine powerful enough to smash through a range of increasingly difficult targets.